Hello, everyone. I'm Tana. Come from Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, so China. And now I am a PhD student in Global Environment Studies at Sofia University. Uh, and my research is about uh, accessing grassland policy in past three communities. Uh, as we all know, Mongolians have been practicing the nomadic cultures, which involved uh, grassland transfer from one pasture to another pasture based on the biomass and uh, uh, availability of pasture for their livestock. But currently, uh, climate change drawn, uh, vegetation degradation and uh, desertification are not only threaten the human beings, but also uh, pasture and uh, their live livelihoods. And government policy over the past decade uh, to alleviate these environment issues and social economic um, issues have failed to yield the desired result. <laughs> and the past realism, both a land use strategy and a system of animal husbandry production still remain the predominant in the uh, 21st century uh, for human beings by offering uh, ecosystem service and close to nature livelihood uh, for the world's uh, marginalized population. So my research was seeking uh, to go back to the past, rethink the Mongolia traditional culture and the indigenous knowledge sent. If there is a way uh, to involve the <laughs> indigenous sustainable uh, resources management uh, to the current uh, grassland policy to against uh, environment issues. Um, and the, today the topic I will talk about uh, all about sacrificial ceremony is also related to my research uh, in a religious ways how ind indigenous residents show their respects to uh, nature. And it is a case study and uh, or those areas. Um, so at first, let's have a quick uh, look at the outline of today's presentation. Uh, I'll talk about the definition first, then go to the uh, area with the first one, uh, and then I'll talk a little bit of uh, religions and the historical origins and uh, the ritual process. At last, uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, practice use of Obo. Um, so let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, what is Obo? Uh, Obo is a Mongolian term. It's often referenced as a uh, care in Western literatures. And currently, uh, it may be defined as a um, secret stone mound, frequently situated aided in a position of high elevation dedicated to heaven and the local deities. And it is believed that our ball protect inhabitants in the vicinity and their herds. And in case of the uh, agricultural Mongols, of course, it including their crops. So in general, uh, our ball are the sort to ensure peace and happiness. Uh, so which areas hold our ball sacrificial ceremony? Uh, uh, from the current literature review, uh, we could find an ball from the landscape, including Mongolia, uh, Karmic Mongol regions in Kazakhstan, uh, Russian Spuliat Republic, and of course, many Mongol areas in China. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and today, uh, uh, the area, the specific area I talk about is in the Mongolia Autonomous Region. Uh, and we could see from the uh, map that in the Mongolia located uh, on the north, northern part of China and the border of the Mongolia country, and it's covered one-eighth of China's land areas. 
uh, and we could see much of the region's um, terrain is plantal uh, and it has a uh, temperate continental climate. Um, so there have other, uh, some basic information from Inner Mongolia. Uh, the majority population is uh, Han Chinese, but the largest ethnic uh, group is Mongolians. And for the uh, natural resources, uh, the main is grassland we could save from this uh, e ecologic map uh, and follows with forest and the specific area. I talk about uh, my case that talk about Urdu's area has two main desert. One is the Kup uh, Kupuchi Desert, the other is the Maosu Desert. So we could see in these areas, it's facing uh, severe environment issues. So one religion functions of our worship in these earth areas is uh, to bring more rains. Uh, and then we go to the religions and uh, historical origins. So Mongolians are believers of shamanism and uh, uh, offer prayers to Tengle. It means the uh, internal heavens. So Mongolia ancestors believe that the sky and the earth are as one. The sky uh, they regard as their loving father and as a sustainer of life. And the earth are as their beneficent mother and giver of the physical body. So it is very hard to distinguish between shamanism and lamanism in Mongolia regions. Uh, but it appears that uh, our ball worship falls with the uh, general scope of Lamanist uh, Buddhism. And the area in uh, Urdus, uh, the Obo worship follows the process of uh, Lamanism Buddhism. Uh, so we could say the conviction indoors or Mongolia's a deep uh, reverence for mountains and rivers. Uh, each of which they believe has its own deities. So uh, in the absence of uh, uh, anthropomorphic icons of this element of nature, the Mongolians create our ball. Uh, and for the specific worship in Urdus, uh, we could say uh, our ball rituals in Urdus areas are close related to uh, Tung Sulit worship. So what is Sulit means? It looks like this kind of flag. So many Urdu's families have such flags in front of their houses, uh, their homes and house, and worship, worship them as a, a holy symbols. Uh, because the Aobao worship uh, officially hold once or twice in a whole year, uh, and the nomadic life is very tough. Uh, each household lives far away from each other. So normally, uh, if they want to uh, show their respects to nature, uh, praying for rings, uh, praying for good luck, they can conduct this uh, mini uh, worship during their own household. So from here, we could say uh, how old is Mongolia uh, respect for nature, and they have a high mooring uh, display in facing environment issues. And then we move to the location. Uh, many outbows are all mountains and hills. They can, however, be uh, built at lower uh, elevations, such as on land, land river banks, and lake shores, and uh, near road. But generally, uh, it's on high um, uh, elevations with a bird's eye view and abund uh, abundance uh, grass and uh, waters. <laughs> so we could see from the picture I took uh, from my field work, uh, from the outbow, we really have a, a good view of the whole town and from the bottom, from the bottom, we could say our ball are located in the highest 
uh, point in the nearby areas and really with uh, a lot of trees and uh, grass. Uh, and uh, in Japanese, it's like Mitoli ga ippai ga arimas. So uh, there is really a relationship between above site and the high elevation, uh, worshipping the mountains and the trees. Uh, there is a belief behind it means uh, the high place as a um, dwelling area of local gods. And it's a high, <coughs> it means the high area uh, closer to Tengula. Tengula we mentioned before is the internal heavens uh, for Mongolia. Mm. And then we move to the process, how they conduct this uh, about sacrifice, uh, sacrificial uh, ceremony. Uh, the time is normally at or May 13th in lunar uh, calendars. Uh, it's always the end of uh, spring and the beginning of summer. It's really a season that uh, pastoralists, the herdsmen, uh, wish to have more rain this year and wish to have a great harvest this year. Um, so during the ceremony, the Lama closed in ropes sit on the upside of our bow, uh, and they make offerings to the our gods by uh, reading Buddhist texts and praying holy waters um, for the uh, herds. Uh, and uh, the general offerings include uh, sheep carcass, uh, carcasses, uh, the alcohol, the dairy food, milk and cakes, uh, which is the uh, important uh, rand food and white food Mongolians always have in important festival. Um, and then the participant circles our ball three times clockwise, uh, laid by Lama, and meanwhile they make their wishes. Uh, and finally, the religion leaders will uh, distribute the sacrificial food to those gathered. And this they regard as the, the indraw as a favor of the Obao. Um, and then we go to the practice use of Obao. Uh, we could be signed these religion functions. Um, there are several, uh, there are uh, several um, practice use of our bow. Uh, there is a scene like in the ancient time, uh, the grassland was uh, boundless, uh, the heaven and the earth were connected. So it is very difficult to identify the direction. The road is also difficult to confirm. Um, and therefore people sought a way they piled the stone and the symbol. And we mentioned Obo originally refers to the stone or earth, uh, mouths piled up with um, stones or earth and to make a boundaries. And we could see the picture also from my field work is really boundaries on grassland and we couldn't see the boundary. And uh, the picture Below is uh, when we transfer from the sedentary community to nomadic areas. We pass by uh, our ball and we really stop and circle three times and put some small stones uh, on the top of the our ball. So what does it mean? It also serves as a, a simple wish uh, safety to passing travelers. Uh, so we end those and other objects as a sacrifice to the Alba deity uh, in order to receive protection for the uh, for our uh, safety journey, safe journey. Mm. And uh, there are some other Alba related activities like Nadam um, after religion ceremony have been conducted. Anadam may follow, uh, which historically including the uh, 
computation of horse raising, wrestling, and archery. Uh, these three uh, sports is the basic uh, skills for Mongolian males, uh, from which they can show how powerful they are, how strong they are, how skillful they are, and it's a good chance to attract females as well. Uh, so it's like um, the Japanese traditional sports, sumo. Uh, the, uh, the sumo likishi show how powerful they are and many Japanese women want to marry married them. I think they have a little bit of similarity uh, all these kind of sports. And we really have a, a beautiful sounds about our ball. Uh, it means uh, meat and our ball, date and our ball. Uh, these romantic stories often happens after the religion ceremony. So it's also um, the last of my pre uh, presentation, also finished by these romantic stories. And this is a reference of my presentation. And thank you so much for your kind attention.